see. Let's uh, do those normal things such as tweeting and discording. And then we're going to get started. like that and then let's also where is my discord um get this um, actually this would be much easier to see if I moved it over here okay Okay, so that should be good. And stick this back over here. And this is good. And this is good. And Black Sun, hello. Thank you for joining me. I am just making sure that everything is how it's supposed to be and how I need it to be. And then we're going to get started here. Okay, stream health is good. Chat is showing up. It's like the more I stream, the more I realize how many different things there are. And I think I'm actually gonna, I was debating, but I think I'm gonna add another headband here. Because once I start bending over, I hate it when my hair just like falls in my face and makes things more difficult than they need to be. So, um,. Okay, let's get organized. I'm, I'm mostly organized. I feel like I'm more organized than I usually am, but I'm still slightly disorganized. So I've got the uh, China Glaze OMG flashbacks. I haven't quite decided which ones I'm going to be doing the gradient with. Before I do that, I want to do a little bit of stamping testing. These are the colors uh, that I'm thinking about stamping with. They're from MoU London. And I've got three MoU plates that I'm considering. I've got the Artist plate, which still has its uh, shrink wrap on it. I've never used it. And uh, I've got my one of my Illusion plates, which I have used before, but not all the designs. I mean, I don't know if I actually own a stamping plate where I've used all the designs. <laughs> Um, but I'm not sure. I'm really leaning more towards using this Gothic plate. This is Gothic 03, and I'm kind of leaning toward this. I mean, it's kind of like, I almost want to call it a fleur-de-lis, although I don't know if that's really an accurate description. And I, I think I am going to go with that. So we'll put these other couple to the side. Um, it's kind of over here. And where are my tweezers? So, I like the MoU plates because they come in these nice little, uh, like, sleeves. And so you can, you know, see a little bit at a glance what they actually are and which collection they're from. When you very first get them, they've got this blue, like, protective layer on it. And I usually just use a tweezer to grab an edge and pull it off. And, you know, Beanie's, Beanie's cam looks empty, but Beanie is actually here. He's in the bed. I can't, I wonder if I can, like, hi, Beanie. <laughs> yes, he is actually under the covers. Let's just, 
There we go. Hi, Bainey. <laughs> he likes to get uh, like tucked in when I'm making the bed. He'll like jump in the bed and not move. He actually wants to be tucked in under the covers. We'll see if he if he stays there the whole stream or if he decides to come out. So I really like this design here. I like this whole plate. I mean, I, I rarely find a whole plate that I like every single design on it, but I prefer to at least like, you know, several designs or it's not really worth picking up a plate. So I think I'll try this with these three colors and see how they turn out, see if there's any differences in the stamping. And then once I pick my stamping color, I'll finalize the colors that I'm going to use for the gradient. Your cat is like that too. Yeah, I find it, I mean, it's not completely weird, but sometimes it's like I try to at least make sure that his head is like near the edge or he can breathe. Sometimes he gets like deeply, deeply in there and doesn't want to come out. He's just like a lump in the middle of the bed. So we've got Purple Haze. We have, uh, I think this is, yeah, Black Knight and Royal Up. Is that what that says? Yeah. So I've also got my crystal clear stamper and scraper, of course, in their little adorable container for protection. Get this lid off and stick this kind of off to the side here. Whoa, and my, uh, I use a lint roller for cleaning my, my stamper head and I've still got leftover uh, water marble stuff on here from the last time we were doing a stamped marble. So I'm going to get a new fresh uh, sheet of, of lint roller so that I'll be ready to go with that. And this is another situation where having my little uh, my little storage cups and stuff on my desk really comes in handy because obviously you don't want to just lay the lint roller down or it's going to stick to everything. So I just stick the handle in my uh, my little dish and it keeps it handy without having it stuck all over everything. So I'm just making sure to kind of see just little bits of stuff that gets stuck on there. It happens. It's fine. But you want to make sure that it's clean before you start stamping. And uh, let's see the easiest way to kind of fit this in here. Well, <laughs> it's like I'm trying to trying to fit a little. Well, of course, I can zoom out a little bit. There. Now we can kind of have all this stuff on camera at the same time so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, get a little bit of polish remover out for the plate, not for the stamper head. Um, although I have recently learned that you can use a little bit of acetone on the clear stamper heads without damaging them. Uh, common knowledge is kind of that if you use too much acetone with them, they'll get cloudy and then obviously they're not clear anymore and you kind of lose the whole point of having the clear, uh, the clear stamper if you can't if you can't see through it anymore so i just tend to stay on the safe side and keep it completely away from a uh, polish remover and right over here is just my acetone and stuff so i've cleaned off the side of my scraper and we'll start with black because why not black is often my go-to for stamping and uh I mean, it, it pretty much always looks good, and I do like Moe's black. It's just kind of a detailed image, so I'm going to cover cover it instead of just using a strip of polish. Scrape it. Stamp it. Now, is this the natural little gaps? I've got a couple. Well, it's kind of hard to see. Let's uh, Let's stamp it here, and then I'll show you guys a little bit clearer. Whoa, well, did I wait too long? Dang it, I waited too long. Okay, when you're stamping, I mean, you want to check what's on the stamper head, but if you wait too long, then it's just going to dry out there. Curtron, hello, Doc. Welcome, and thank you for joining me. I'm just uh, going to use a little bit of this yellow stopper to uh, create a little tacky spot. Kind of see it on my notepad there. And... Uh, 
Hopefully that'll get this off of the stamper and onto the paper. Okay, we got half of it. <laughs> this is this is not starting out the best, but uh, it's kind of my fault. I do think that first stamp showed me. Yeah, you do have to speed run stamping. <laughs> no joke. Um, sometimes when you have, and I'm just gonna grab a whoa, sorry, Q-tip to clean this off with. Sometimes when you have a really, depending on the design. Uh, like the edges of the design, if you're scraping one way, it can help the little gaps and stuff like, well, that, that stamp is a mess. It's hard to show you, but basically areas that should be solid have a little gap at the lip from, uh, <laughs> hello, Astorata. Yeah, boys can paint their nails. Uh, it's like when you, if you stroke the polish on and you scrape in the same direction, the little corner that you're scraping away from sometimes doesn't get enough polish. So let's try applying the polish the opposite direction we're going to be scraping. Like that. Then a scrape. Then a, oh no, that really didn't pick up well, of course. You know, I was thinking since I wasn't water marbling that it would be fine to have my fan blowing on me, but that may be incorrect. Give me just a second here. Adjust that little fan window. Okay, let's try this again. Or maybe the black polish is just not suitable for this and we'll end up going with the purple or the blue. But it's, of course, much better to have these problems during the testing than once I actually get to doing my nails. So we're not getting blown on anymore. That should help. Polish. Scrape. Stamp. You know, it's still not giving me a completely clean transfer. Let me zoom in here so I can kind of try to, uh, Coney, hello. Yes, Coney! Yes! I'm so glad that you can tell what they are. I was I was saying the other day that I wasn't sure if they were exactly what I wanted or the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> so I'm glad that it is obvious what I'm what I'm trying to uh go for. So let me get like super super zoomed in here. So like part of this is just the design, but part of this, like right here you could see and a couple other spots like right in here those gaps are not in the actual design where's our design here see like you know these little spots here at the bottom those are supposed to be solid and you can see here that we have a couple little gaps so like i said that can come from when you how you apply the polish and how you scrape and uh, I really would like to eliminate those, but also with this design, it's it's not as bad as with some others. With this design, they almost look like they're kind of intended to be that way. So I'm not too mad about it. You want to see the other tiers? I know I don't have anybody that's a tier, uh, a, like a three month tier yet, so... Uh, that'll be like mid, mid August, I think. Stephanie, hello. Thank you for joining us. We're just trying to, uh, figure out what color we're stamping with and figuring out how to minimize the gaps in this design. Um, I'm going to give it a try with the blue too and see if part of it is not just the polish. You're driving from North Carolina to Pennsylvania, so you'll see how long you can watch. Oh man, that, okay, I'm trying to like mentally... Okay, so that's not like a super long drive, but I feel like any time you're going between states, I mean, that's, you probably got to be talking about a few hours. Nope, you have to wait, Coney, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I can tell you that it is basically just more rings. More months is more rings. But may, maybe I'll show you guys toward the end of stream. So let's try this blue. Oh, I love the color. I'm also stamping in a slightly different direction, too. Ooh, okay. Look at that. 
Now, I think you can see, like, uh, where's my, my pointer here? At, uh, at the bottom here, like this section here, you can really see how that's filled in a lot better than on the black version. I like the, and I wonder if that's partly the way I stamp too, because as we learned last time, even the direction that you apply the stamper can, can change how the design itself stamps. So, like when I say how you apply the stamper, I'm talking about like how you roll it on the image plate. Like, are you rolling like from this way? Are you rolling this way or this way, this way or this way? All those little subtleties sometimes, not always, but sometimes can actually make a difference in how the design turns out. So let's uh, do one more test with the purple here. And I'm again going to kind of stroke on the polish a little bit sideways, scrape, and then a sideways-ish stamp. The purple is very pretty also. I feel like it's not quite coming across on camera how metallic they are. The question is, though, how much... Okay, so I'm leaning toward the purple or the blue at this point, just because they seem to be playing nicer with the pattern. Hi, Sacrista. Thank you. I, uh, I had a couple others that I was considering, but I decided to go with this one. I really like it. Let's, uh, so we'll say we're going to use the blue, I think for right now. I'm really liking the blue. I'm really liking how the design likes the blue. So let's, uh, well, let's zoom zoom back out a little bit here. I'm thinking silver. I'm thinking either silver, purple, and pink, or silver, purple, and blue. But I wonder how the blue would stamp over the other blue. So let's test that out before we get to the manicure also. I've got a, a latex free sponge here. And, well, let's close these so I don't accidentally knock them over. That would be good. And, uh, just kind of scoop my stamping stuff off to the side here. And give these a try. So, silver, purple, pink, or silver, pink, purple? I think silver, purple, pink. Yes, Dr. Crotron. Yes, you can. I, I'm i trying to think if I have actually tried it. It's a little bit challenging because the liquid latex does not fully want to cooperate with that sort of thing. Um, but yes, it is possible. I have se I've seen others do like amazing things with it. So let's... Okay. All right, there we go. So, trying to keep this as much on camera as I can, you guys. Let's just, are these open? Okay. Get some silver. Get some purple. And get some pink. And get a little gradient action going here. Now, I'm not going to try and make this gradient on the paper like flawless gorgeous gradient just uh just enough to kind of give me an idea of uh of how the stamp is going to look over the actual gradient on my nails i'm whoa whoa yes that was a brush you guys saw roll through the camera because apparently i suck at getting it into the bottle so there's the silver purple pink And let's, where's my, okay, whoa. And since we're just experimenting, I'm just going to cut off this top for the next set of colors and do the silver. Of course, now I have the same question again. Silver, purple, blue, or silver, blue, purple? You don't have the slightest clue what you're talking about. You'll learn, Astorada. <laughs> 
when hitting your fingers with a hammer. Beanie's killing you right now. Because <laughs> he's just so damn relaxed, or what? Can I actually... I wonder, can I... No. Well, will you let me zoom in a little bit, Cat Cam? Or are you already... No, I don't think you will. I'm I'm kind of hoping he'll move back down to his chair. He's uh, He's been there under the covers for, like, literally already, like, two hours. Um... I think we're going to do silver, blue, purple. He he sits there when I make the bed and just waits to be burritoed in the covers. Then I call him a bean burrito. And he just apparently finds it to be the comfiest spot ever. All right, so there's our silver, blue, purple. We'll do one more layer of that. And then we're going to stamp the blue on top and see which one we like better. Silver, blue, I'm not on camera, purple. Oh, okay. I almost thought I was about to stamp or to sponge it in the wrong direction. Okay, so we've got our little test gradients here. <laughs> right, meow. God, where's Ninja when we got these good puns going here? Okay, so... No, this isn't going to fit. Um, where... Where did the blue go? Over here. Okay, let's uh, clean the plate. You don't have to clean the plate in between every time, but I almost always do. Because it just... It seems to me to get you a, a better chance of a cleaner design. All right, let's, uh, mm, which side was I using? This side, I think. Scrape. Whoa. Tip over a bottle. Stamp. And then... I like that. I like, I like, I think I'm going to like both of these, and the problem is going to be choosing one between them. I mean, I think the purple would... I should have gone slightly off to the side. Then I could have tested the purple, too. I mean, I've still kind of got room to do a purple test. Alright, let's see here. Scrape. Stamp. Wow, that's a very uneven stamp. Stamp. See, that shows up. It, I was worried that it would not show up over the blue, but it actually is showing up quite well. But I think I am going to test the purple, even though I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that I'm going to go with the blue. And I thought about, like, testing before I got started so I could just get on here and actually start doing my nails. And then I thought, well, why not also stream the testing? Because sometimes even when you, you know what you're doing, like you don't know exactly what you're doing. Like I was pretty sure I was doing a hollow gradient with some stamping. But uh, like finalizing. There's the purple over the... Uh, and that actually shows up pretty well too. The purp... I, I think... I think... I kind of prefer the purple over the silver, purple, pink, and I think I'm kind of going to prefer the blue over the silver, blue, purple. But we got we got to check and make sure, because sometimes, I mean, you can't you can't assume anything with nail art. Um, you might have done something a million times before, and you change one little small thing, and everything changes. Okay, let's. Uh... Oops. I, I like both of those, but I think we are going to go for this, the blue on top of the silver, blue, purple. I, I really do like the, the purple over the silver, purple, pink, though. Maybe we can revisit... Whoa. 
That sounded like you were going way too fast down a residential area. And oops, sorry again, you guys. I do have my window open today. I'm hoping I'm not going to regret it and like halfway through just be like completely sweating all over the place. But it's not, it's supposed to get hot. It's not that hot yet. So we'll stick these over here and let's, let's organize before we start the actual manicure. So we're not using the black and the purple. We're not using the teal or the coral or the pink. We are using this plate. We are going to be using the stamper. So we'll set you guys. And sometimes when you're stamping, see if I can show this, like the stamper head gets pushed down in there because it is loose. You can kind of just, you know, give it a little, a little wiggle because if it gets down in there too much, it makes it hard to, hard to stamp it on the plate. Like if it gets pushed down so that only only the round head is still out and it doesn't have any uh like silicone lip um then you're like hitting the plate with the barrel of the stamper um instead of just with the silicone head so like every i'll try to keep an eye on it every stamp and then just like every couple just pull it out a little bit if it needs it it depends it depends on how hard you're stamping it depends on lots of things whoa okay so we'll stick those to the side we'll get out a couple of uh sponges and then we're gonna get going and i am gonna be recording a tutorial so i hope you guys don't mind when i do that i don't think you do it's kind of funny actually when i get to recording because it used to be when I was recording, I could easily tell where the sections were that I had intended to speed up because I wasn't talking. So you can, it shows the, uh, I, I don't know what the thing is, but you know, it goes up and down when there's sound. And so when there's no talking, it's flat. And so I'd be able to look at a glance and say, oh, that's a speed up section. Now I have to literally like, uh, pay more attention when I'm editing, which is kind of funny. Yes, I'm still finishing my tea, even though it's the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> so let's get a fresh napkin for the tutorial. And I think I'm going to need a little bit more polish remover in here. And we'll get started. And I don't expect this to be a super long stream because hopefully... I'm not going to be running into any problems and I'm just uh, quickly swiping off my nails with acetone, make sure they're fully clean, fully dry before we get going really helps with the uh, peel off base coat. Um, I'm hoping there are no issues with this manicure and I can kind of just do it. <laughs> I don't want another repeat of uh, the nail foil fail. I just want something I can get accomplished. My nails have actually been naked almost all week. Um, cause I just, I've been really, really tired and I felt like not up to streaming. And I'm like, well, I'm to a point where I kind of almost don't want to do my nails off stream. Cause I feel like I'm depriving you guys, which is maybe a little bit silly, but I thought, well, okay, I'm not going to my grandma's house today, which I usually do every single Friday because we are going on Monday instead. Because in the summertime, sometimes you got to adjust your schedule around the church sales, you see. And there's a church sale that they want to go to on Monday. So we just switched our, uh, our weekly visit to Monday for this week. I will still be streaming this weekend. Um, right now I'm thinking Saturday and Sunday might both be Hollow Knight streams. Because I haven't played Hollow Knight in like over a week since I was doing the 12 hour challenge last weekend and uh yeah I'm uh I'm missing that game a lot <laughs> what polishes I'm stamping with so the ones I tested let me just pull my notebook back over here they're all from Moyu London this black is uh 
Black Knight. The blue, which is what I'm going to be using for my manicure, is called Royal Up. And you see, I mean, it looks a lot darker in the bottle, which is one of the reasons I wanted to uh, do a little bit of testing. It's very metallic and, I mean, a little, maybe a little bit duochrome at the right angle, but not like a drastic duochrome. Um, and same thing for the purple, which is uh, Purple Haze. It's very metallic and has like a little bit of a duochrome to it, but not a drastic duochrome. It's like between shades of purple rather than like purple to orange or something drastic like that. And the plate that I'm using is, uh, what is this here? Gothic number three. So where we've got, we've got a fresh bottle ready for takeoff. Well, I mean, I've used it a couple times, but the real treat, you guys, the real treat is a fresh bottle. I mean, it's my old bottle, but it's a fresh bottle of Simply Peel. Those of you who were here when I was using it the last time, and it was all, like, gross, <laughs> um, I actually poured out everything that was left in the bottle, then left it open to dry and, like, peeled off everything from the inside so that the bottle was completely clean. And then I just filled it up with fresh latex that I ordered during the uh, uh, Bliss Kiss Summer Sale. I got some Simply Peel, I got some lip gloss, I got some lotion, all kinds of good stuff. And I was like, well, I've got this fresh Simply Peel now. I feel like I need to do a gradient. So that was kind of part of the reason that I decided to do that today. The Frosty Twinkle Tea Stamping Polishes. I haven't tried any of the Twinkle Tea Stamping Polishes, but I kind of would like to, but I feel like I already buy a ton of polish, like, more than I need. Um, to buy polishes specifically for stamping as rarely as I stamp seems like a little bit uh, kind of irresponsible, I guess you could say. But so I guess that means I just need to stamp more so that I have more of an excuse to purchase stamping polishes. So let's get, I think, a little bit closer here. Like, I think that, well, hmm. I'm just trying to make sure everything is lined up here between the webcam and my normal cam. There, that should be good. Maybe a little bit there. I think that's good. You guys should be able to see what I'm doing. Um, and I think, does, is Twinkle T, do they have their own stamping plates too, or am I thinking of somebody else? Okay, we've got everything lined up here. We've got our sesh feet. All right, let's actually get started. And Bane is still, he's like completely knocked out and you can't even, I should, well, I don't, I don't want to move that. That's my, this little thing here that's uh, in the way of seeing Bane's adorable little face is my other flexible arm which I had the webcam on when I was doing my 12 hour challenge because the little TV is like right here um so I put the camera also there mm. Bunda Monster has plates and polishes I have two or three Bunda Monster sets of plates now I don't remember I've, I've got a lot of plates <laughs> They work as regular polish too. That's nice. I I like that a lot. The Moyu the Moyu London ones also technically work as regular polish, although I don't think I've actually used any as regular polish. Um, vinyls. I you know I love vinyls, but I I kind of suck with them. <laughs> like my last reciprocal gradient, I kind of made it work, but I in the end I I did feel a little bit disappointed because. I always feel like even when I try my hardest to make sure that the vinyls or whatever are pressed completely flat and have good uh, adhesion that I end up with little gaps and I end up with, you know, polish seeping underneath, which is just, I mean, it's just frustrating. Okay, here. Let's -a go. Okay. <clears throat> Starting off with clean, dry nails, I'm going to begin with a base coat. 
I'm using Ready for Takeoff, which is a peel-off base. You can use whichever is your personal favorite. And I do try to use a fairly thin layer of Ready for Takeoff, which is kind of the opposite of the peel-off that I have from Madame Glam. That one seems to work best with a thicker coat. A thicker coat of the peel-off and, generally speaking, thicker coats of polish um, or gel, which usually my gel tends to end up being thick, even when I'm trying my hardest to keep it thin. And, like, I, w I was really, really frustrated with Ready for Takeoff at the beginning of this year because I had a couple peelies that just were, like, peeling off way before I wanted them to, and that's when I was kind of considering other peel-offs or even going away from a peel-off base. But the Madame Glam, I really am not a huge fan of with uh, with regular polish. Did not work well, in my experience. Worked okay with, like, a regular glitter polish, but just, like, a regular couple coats of a you know a normal polish was hell to remove like you could not even like little chunks were coming off and I ended up used basically having to use polish remover because it wasn't peeling properly uh glitter was better but it works really well with gel polish better than the ready for takeoff ready for takeoff and gel polish like I barely can get a day but some of the things that I did learn with the Madame Glam peel-off, I've kind of um, turned around and applied with Ready for Takeoff, and it has helped me to improve my wear. You know, I really try not to quite get it to the edge of the nail or all the way to the cuticle, so that that way when you finish with, like, your top coat or your regular polish, you're kind of sealing it all in around the edges. It's the same reason that I started wrapping uh, the sides of my nails as well as the tip because it seems like the the tip of your nail is one of the weak spots and the cuticle of your nail is one of the weak spots when you're wearing a peel-off base where you're most likely to start getting lifting yeah because i feel like with the uh, with vinyls they seem so simple you're like why the hell doesn't this work stamping is, is a simple ish technique but there are a lot of different factors to it whereas with the vinyls you're just like freaking please just stick on my nail you can't get it to last longer than 12 hours yeah i've i've seen a lot of people say that what one of the other things i really don't like about it is that it's uh the more you use it the better your nails do with it somehow that might be i mean i've been using it for a couple years at this point um, but one of the things that I definitely still experience with it is that it's very inconsistent. Um, maybe, I'm trying to think it was maybe a month or so ago, I had a manicure last a full week, like no problem. And then like uh, the water marble that I did with these OMG polishes, I was starting to have trouble with a couple coming off like the next day, like, you know, 24 hours later. And I stuck a couple of them back on, but sometimes that seems to work better than others. So, I don't know. I'm just considering here, as my base coat is drying, whether I want to have a base color. And I think, like, that probably would be a good idea. So I probably should do it. I kind of don't want to. But I feel like it would be the... Uh, the responsible nail artist thing to do because every time I'm like, oh, just go for it. Just skip the, uh, just skip the base color. I always, always end up regretting it. And what direction I want the gradient also. I'm thinking, and what direction I want the stamp also. I'm thinking, let's look at this again. Thinking I might do purple toward the tips. Also, partly because the silver is the sheerest of the colors as far as, uh, like, applying many... I don't want to end up having to do, like, four layers of gradient. I mean, I, I really love it when I can get away with two layers of gradient. Three, I can accept. Four, I'm going to start getting a little bit irritated with. 
and probably this this side that has the couple dots probably toward the tip of my nail I think well we're not there so it'd actually be it'd be more like like oh now you guys really can't see it would be like well okay I'm I'm not here let's do like this so it'd be like that on my nail with the purple at the tips and the dotted end of the design toward the tip of my nail too and some of my shorter nails my right hand is a little bit shorter than my left again I broke a little bit of a corner on my middle nail you can see there so you know this this design might actually be a little bit longer than I can fit on my nail hmm. well we'll just fit as much as we possibly can and see how that goes Let's, uh... Okay, so Ooh. Let's close these before I start flinging them all around on camera. Did I fully close this one? One of the things that really will will piss me off is if I I like partially close a bottle and then don't realize that I haven't really tightly closed it because that will come back to haunt you um you know it the, the polish will dry out or at least get thicker or you haven't even closed it as much as you thought and you go to grab it by the by the top and everything just comes apart which is also a problem so we've got these all lined up so that we can show them all on camera. <clears throat> oh, I want to show that too. <clears throat> the colors that I'm going to be using in my gradient today are from the China Glaze OMG Flashback Collection. The purple is IDK. The blue is Tonight. And the silver is OMG. I'll also be using the silver as my base color. And for the stamping, I'm going to be using Moyu London Royal Up. So, like I mentioned, the uh, the silver, OMG, is a little bit sheerer. I'm trying to remember if I did end up going with three coats when I was uh, just doing my swatches of these. And I think that I did. Because you can, I mean, you can probably see there, you can kind of still see, like, my visible nail line. You can see where my free edge starts. But I think for the, uh, for the gradient, it'll really help to have a base color. I, 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 like I said, I've so often been like, oh, these colors are opaque. They're fine. I don't need a base color. But you'll never regret doing it. You have about I'd say even odds of regretting not doing it so just do it and save yourself some save yourself some trouble <laughs> and some of these bottles I feel like I have been using these colors a lot lately and a couple of them have had some accidents and it's kind of interesting how uh, the hollow really pops out on the mess that I made on the bottle more than it does when you're just looking at the at the color in the bottle. I'll show you guys here in a minute once I uh once I finish my right hand. Well, I'll show you now. You can see. Well, of course the camera is not playing nicely. There you can see a little bit of the of the hollow on this area right uh, right here. That's the angle. So tricky to catch with the with the ring light. But I think that's, I mean, one of the struggles with nail art and just generally one of the struggles with streaming too is just getting good lighting that shows detail and shows color. Well, I mean, most streamers aren't necessarily worried about how, how, how well and accurately the color shows. But with nail polish, you also have to worry about like the finish, like showing how something is shimmery or sparkly or pearly or you know opalescent or holographic 
Like, all that is just as difficult as getting something captured in a color-accurate way. Like, getting the finish to show accurately can really be a challenge. Whoop, and that's exactly how I get polish on the side of the bottle. Is by thinking I'm inside the neck of the bottle. And no, you are not inside the neck of the bottle. You are outside the bottle. So, there we go with our base color and you can kind of start to see a little bit of the hollow so I'm sorry I'm like mesmerizing myself here caters hello thank you for joining us we are just getting started on uh, a gradient and then we're gonna stamp on top of it all right um I think we'll just show this. We don't really need to talk about it. We can mention it in the next one for anybody that's unfamiliar. But yes, my my fresh Simply Peel with also a fresh brush. So nice, you guys. Look at this. Look how nice that is. <laughs> and I'm not going like super overboard because you don't really need to. For a, for a gradient. I am considering, as I'm doing this, when I'm going to want to remove this Simply Peel because you kind of have two options. You either can remove it after the gradient and apply it again for the stamping. You can use the same... Uh, the same application for both, like uh, do the gradient and then do the stamping and then remove it, or do the gradient and then remove it and then not bother with it for the stamping. So I guess I'll need to decide that in the next few minutes here. But this is so much nicer to work with than that curdled mess that I was dealing with before. I'm sure it's so much nicer to watch, too. I forget who it was they said that it made them very uncomfortable. My, uh, my gross old Simply Peel. <laughs> it, it was really, it was like, I, it made me realize to Krista that even um, before it had gone all weird and curdled like that, that my latex was, like, old. It was... It was not like this even before it got as bad as it was, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know how, how, how to explain it. Like it was it before, even before it was kind of curdled, it was getting kind of thick and weird. And, uh, this is just so much nicer to work with. And I do somewhere. Somewhere in my unorganized stash, I have a really cheap, um, like liner polish that I brought that I bought at the dollar store specifically to empty out and have a bottle with a liner brush that I could fill for latex so that I could attempt, uh, what Dr. Crotron was asking about earlier, which is painting nail art with the latex, applying um another color on top and then peeling the latex to reveal the design so maybe if i can track down where that uh striper bottle ended up maybe one day we can do that it's just it's just another one of those like nail art projects that i kind of started and then never actually finished rainbow sherbet scented latex Makes you want to put it on everything. I mean, that almost seems dangerous. Like, it just, like, things that, like, I, I was one of those kids that would get, like, the lip smackers. Is that what they were called? The <laughs> bean over there. Uh, the, the flavored lip stuff and just, like, apply it and then be like, apply it and be like, blah, 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 blah. which, I mean, is kind of weird and kind of gross because, hello, it's not intended to be like eaten but uh you know you're a kid you don't know any better it could have been worse 
If Moon Bandit was here, that would be a prompt for her to tell a story that she told yesterday again. Uh, it's satisfying, like playing with Elmer's glue. Yeah, cover your cover your whole hands in glue and sit there and wait for it to dry and then peel it off. <laughs> Latex sounds kinky. Could be. I mean, I don't know what kinky purpose you'd put this particular sort of latex to, Ast Astorata. But, I mean, I'm sure people could find... So, I mean, people can find a way to be kinky. Vibrant vinyls. I'm assuming they also sell vi ugh, nail vinyls caters. Where did I... Oh, right here. So, um, I think it was also Dr. Crotron, who I'm assuming, assuming is lurking while he adults. Um... The last time I was sponging, if there was a reason for using latex-free sponges, and I said not really, except then the other day when I got my order, I was reminded there is a reason, and that is that latex sticks to itself, which is why, of course, you don't want your fingers, like, touching once you've applied the liquid latex. And if you use a latex sponge, then your sponge would stick to your barrier and uh, cause you some issues. So that is one reason to use latex-free sponge. Or, of course, if you have a latex allergy, although I don't know, I mean, like, the sponge is not coming super into contact with your skin. I mean, it's going to be covered in polish and you're basically just dabbing it on there. So I don't know if a, if a vinyl sponge would actually be bad for somebody with a vinyl allergy, but, or a, a vinyl sponge, a latex sponge, um... But, like, I, I've never seen sponges that aren't marked latex-free, so I don't know. I want to give this just a little bit longer to dry. You can see it's almost clear now, um, and that's how you tell when it's dry. And we've also got a little tiny bit of sparkles on there, because why not sparkles? So let's just, we'll use this moment to uh, get these bottles back open again. And, uh... Where am I going to set these? Let's, uh... I'm trying to make sure not to block you guys and not to block my other camera. Oh. And I'm already feeling sleepy. <laughs> you guys, I think... I'm, I'm not sure if it was the amount of streaming or just, like, the amount of pressure I was putting on myself or the amount of mental, like, effort I was putting forward trying to trying to beat Super Mario but after last weekend I just felt so exhausted like I was sleeping in super late I took a couple of naps which I usually try not to do because I'm not like a 15 minute nap person I'm like a two to three hour nap person which not only uh you know uses up a good chunk of your day but it makes it harder to get to sleep at a reasonable hour. And I already have really weird sleeping hours. So I try not to nap unless it's like literally... If, if I find myself almost falling asleep in my desk chair, well then yeah, go take a nap. Because sleeping in your desk chair is not good for you. Sleeping in your desk chair will give you all kind of weird problems. And you'll probably have limbs falling asleep. I do speak from experience. And uh, yeah, just generally not a good idea. Oh my god, Bean is so adorably knocked out. Funny little boy. Alright, so... These are open. This is, uh... Now, like I, I, I think I've mentioned before that sometimes I will trim the, the sponge size to match my nails. This is a little bit longer than like my, what my nails are right now. But I'm not going to worry about it too much because since we're only using three colors in the gradient, it's going to be a lot easier to keep them all on my nails than it is when I'm using like five or six colors. Five or six colors, you really have to be mindful of your placement. You really have to be mindful of, of where you're dabbing on your nail. Your sleeping hours begin when everyone around you starts going to work. Sometimes I feel that way, Astorata. Like when I'm up to like 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning and, uh, you know, hearing the start hearing the newspaper get delivered, sun starts coming up, birds start chirping, morning news is coming on and I'm just going to bed. Then, yeah, I'm like, hmm, 
maybe my schedule is a bit odd. I've tried to adjust it like a little bit and it never seems to last very long. Two, two, I really should be going to bed at like 2 a.m. I feel like would be reasonable. Most people would probably not even agree that was reasonable, but for me, that would be my, my goal bedtime. So let's get started with the actual gradient here. <clears throat> As you can see, I applied some Simply Peel around my nails to protect around the sides. And I'm just going to apply the three colors on the sponge and get to gradienting, if that's a word. So the silver, the blue is going to be in the middle. You can overlap them a little bit on the sponge to like help the gradient get started. And then the purple on the other side. And the when the sponge is naked, you might need to apply a little bit more polish just as it starts to absorb some of it. But you'll kind of get a feel for that as you go along. And then just make sure you're lined up where you want to be and start applying. And these are... I mean, I'm already glad that I that I did a base color, but I am just eyeballing it, thinking I'm probably going to end up doing at least three coats of the gradient. We'll see, though. Sometimes, sometimes it'll surprise you. The first layer will look real sheer, and then, like, somehow the, the second layer pulls through and is more vibrant. Or sometimes, as you go, you'll have a little bit more left on the, left on the sponge, and you can use up that extra on some of the other nails that appear to need it. And I am, in this case, a lot of times I'll work one hand at a time. But I think in this case I am going to just do both hands at once. And I can see... Like, at, see at the at the cuticle of the thumb? Like, I've lifted up a little bit of that base color, which is a little bit frustrating. But not so badly that it's uh, really going to be a problem. But that is why, in many cases, you will see me uh, do a top coat on top of the base color. Is to keep from picking it up again with the sponge and creating bald spots. All right, right hand can be a little bit more awkward doing things left-handed, but my advice is always just, like, try. Just, just do stuff with your left hand and get it used to not just hanging at the end of your arm. I think you can kind of see on the pinky there, too. See right in the center? Right. It, it's really hard to show on camera between the ring light and some of the hollow starting to come through, but... A little bit of a more bald patch, but again, not a deal breaker. But um, you do want, I mean, it's something you want to be aware of because if you, sometimes if you, if you go to fix it and you're trying to fix it at the wrong time, it just makes it worse. You go to dab on more color and really you're just dabbing off more color. And this is a little trickier. This is actually like, if you can see, well, hopefully you can see, we'll see. There's another one. See the, the tip of that finger. I picked up too much polish and we've got a bald spot. Um, really with my right hand, I would prefer the paint on this side, but it's, it's a very minor difference. I mean, I could solve that whole problem by just putting polish in the center of the sponge, but I prefer polish on the edge of the sponge because for me it seems to help me apply it more evenly on my nail. Like if I can line up the edge of the sponge with the edge of my nail. And the thumb is always a little bit awkward to try and get on camera, but you make it work. See, and like I said there, just kind of continue dabbing 
and it'll all it'll all work out in the end, or it won't, and you have to start over. I mean, it's not. I mean, I try to. Everything's not always going to be fine, but that is also fine. Naked sponges. <laughs> Yes, naked naked sponges. The nails were naked earlier, and uh, I'm trying to think what else we have around here naked. I don't know. And this these dry fairly fast. So I'm just gonna go right ahead. Actually, let's uh stop this and restart it. I'm gonna go ahead and go right into the second layer. You got to be mindful also of your sponge. Like if the sponge starts to get dry and tacky, that will make the problem of picking up the polish that's already on your nails even worse. So if you feel like the sponge starts to get dry and the polish on the sponge starts to get tacky, you either want to get a new sponge or, uh, you know, start on a fresh spot on your existing sponge. And these are going together pretty nicely. Even though I'm kind of half cheating it. You got you guys that watch me all the time know that usually usually I will reload the sponge in between every nail. And it it depends on the polish. It depends on the gradient, it depends on the moon phase. I don't even know. Just every Everything affects everything. I know that sounds kind of like a cop-out, but I mean, with nail art, it's it's actually really true. Little small things can affect everything else. But I'm, I'm liking these together, and I'm hoping... Well, got quite a bit of... There, that's okay. Like, can you see on the thumb a little bit? I'm hoping that they'll look hollow once they're dried, also. Um, sometimes when you gradient hollows together, like, the, oh god, if you guys can hear that, I apologize. Well, you, you probably can hear it. Um, like, okay, is this is this a thing everywhere now? Like, where the ice cream trucks fucking don't have bells? Like, what happened to that? When I was a kid, the ice cream man went by, it was ring, 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 ring. And now they play these, like, weird songs. Here on the thumb, you can kind of still see also. You've got that little bitty bald patch there. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit more just silver and just, like, lightly, carefully add a little bit more there. And hopefully it'll also get masked on the third layer. But, like, if you see any spots like that, you can definitely do that. But, but, be careful that you don't add too much and, um, like, apply it over where your gradient is. Like, if you're applying strictly silver in an area that on your nail is silver and blue, that's going to be noticeable. So, just be mindful of your little corrections. You remember bells too, Fuzzy? Yeah, I mean it's like it really it really pisses off my mom, especially when they're rolling down the street playing Christmas music. She'll like full on like get like I don't want to say rage because I mean like she's my mom and she's not really like raw, but she gets pretty pretty freaking heated. She's like, it's not Christmas time. Quit playing freaking Christmas music. And I don't know if I said hello, Fuzzy, but welcome. Down on the bay? I, I, the ones that they play are usually like, they seem like nursery rhyme songs or like Christmas carols. Around here. And, uh, like one time my mom said she even asked him, like, why are you playing Christmas music? And he just like smirked at her. Like they just thought it was funny. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of weird to me. But kids nowadays, you know, everything nowadays. 
That's when you know you're you're really starting to get old. See this? Can you guys still see here? Toward the tip, that little there, that little spot that just needs a little bit more. We'll add we'll add some of the leftovers from the thumb there, and then we're gonna let this dry for a bit before we before we add our third coat. Our third coat of gradient. You have to remember the Bob Ross rule also, which is that a thin paint will always stick to a thick paint. Oh, this I feel like this thumb is super wonky. There. I need to, okay. Sorry, gotta do a little bit of this thumb off camera because the angle is just too weird. Just too freaking weird. And it's th this is what I'm this is perhaps the best example that I've had. This is the sponge sponging up too much of the base color. So I'm gonna add a little bit more purple and a little bit more blue just on the very edge and try to just like like that. There. That's better. We'll see. The third the third layer will really clean all this up, of course. And and of course also, you're not gonna be able to see just the gradient because we're stamping on top of it. So I don't know why I'm trying so hard to get it like flawless. <laughs> Alright, Astorada, thanks for stopping by. Have a great day. You're lurking while doing laundry. Congratulations on adulting, Fuzzy. I have so many chores that I should be doing. But uh, lurkers make the world go round. Absolutely, you are welcome to lurk. With radio stations playing Christmas music in November? I agree, Danielle. And hello and welcome, by the way. And hello, Becky. Yes, with the cool story, Bob. And hello... Okay. Lee Lee Lee? 2001? Is that the correct amount of Lee's? Or Lil? Lil Lil Lil? Lil Lil Lil? <laughs> I think we'll, ju we'll just call you Lil if you don't object. Or maybe 2001. That's easy too. The, uh, the cool story Bob is one of my favorite emotes. <laughs> I think it's just, it's, it's so... I don't even know what word I want to put to it, but here's this site with all these gamers and, you know, all all that and whatever. And, but then, like, everybody loves Bob Ross. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Thank you, Coney. Yeah, I really like these together. I'm still really disappointed that China Glaze didn't release all 12 colors of the original collection because... It was like I started thinking about what I wanted to do for a gradient and I was like, ooh, I could do something with like the teal to a green. And then I was like, wait, I don't have a green because they didn't re-release the green and because my original green didn't age well. Just Lee is good. <laughs> All right. I, I never know. Well, sometimes I know. But I, I feel like so often, at least once a stream, I get at least one name that is somewhat of a challenge for me to pronounce. I'm just checking how dry these are. Like, dry to the touch, I, I often say. Like, that's when you can very lightly touch it and you're not getting any fingerprints in the polish. If I were to take my nail and like, crush you know, like dig at it or really knock it hard into something, you know, this polish is not fully dry. But, uh, still can't figure out if those will get here. Oh, I know, you know, I'm trying to think, I know several like international shipping sites, but I don't know if they ship to Chile. It, it seems like, you know, that would be a, a good business model to me. I mean, who doesn't love nail polish to, to have some kind of importing of nail polish because international shipping too can be really expensive. If you do find a site that ships and then it's like, Oh, and they have reasonable prices and all this is great. And what the hell is with these shipping charges? 
But I don't know if Chile is as bad as, like, I know Australia is really, really expensive to ship to. But I hope, I hope you can either find them somewhere that'll ship to you, Coney, or that your local shops get them before it's, like, six months later. But even if it is six months later, they're still worth picking up. So I'm going to do one more coat. I'm going to start with a fresh sponge this time because this sponge is getting like sticky. It's not horrible, but just just to be on the safe side, I'm going to start with a new sponge. And uh, yeah, we should be good to go here. Not many stores ship things out of the U.S. Yeah, I know there's some... Now that I think about it, a lot of the ones that I'm actually thinking of are like based in in Europe area. I, I'm horrible at geography, guys. Anybody international that's watching, you are free to point and laugh at me. But um, I remember at one point I was looking for some Colors by LaRoe polish of the month from like previous months that were no longer available on their site. And I ended up buying from... I think it's Hypnotic Polish. I think they're based in like the UK. And Moyu London, which I'm using the plates and the stamping polish, like the stuff that I have from them, I think I did actually buy from them. So that was also like an international purchase, but they also do sell some stuff on Amazon. But even Amazon like is confusing. Like Amazon seems to have, you know, a site for each country and and like why why is that necessary? Why can't everybody just use the same Amazon? You decided you wanted the color club halls instead. I really like those too, Lee. Um, I actually have those. I actually need to do like a haul video for those. Maybe early next week we'll do a a, a haul of the color club. Um, what are they now? Halo Chrome and Halo Crush are the two collections. There are other pretty polishes out there that you may want more. This is also true. I mean, China Glaze, to me, like, if if I did not have such a desire to compare them to the originals, I don't know if I would have picked these up because hollows are so much easier to find nowadays. And compared to some of the other hollows, these are maybe not as impressive. But I also really like China Glaze. China Glaze is one of the first brands that I kind of started using as a blogger, as opposed to just like a nail art enthusiast. Lurking while donating plasma interest. <laughs> that is a good thing to do. It, it squicks me out a little bit. I have a little bit of a needle phobia. Plus I just, I have very tiny veins, so I'm not good at giving blood. So I've never like donated it outside of like donating at the, I mean, you're not donating at the doctor's office. You're using it for tests and stuff, but like, that's a that's a good deed. I don't know if I want to say congratulations, and it's not exactly a have fun situation, but enjoy your lurk at the very least. Just saw some today from Live Love Polish. Well, and today is uh, what is that site that half you guys the Polish Pickup? That's open, I believe, this weekend because it's the first weekend of the of the month. And now I'm like, man, do I want to go on there and go down that rabbit hole? Yeah, had to, uh, it, it, blah, blah, blah. a lot of the online sites where the polish is on the cheaper side, it's like the shipping is kind of on the not cheap side. I ended up getting mine from Trans Design, and the shipping from them is not cheap either, but I didn't find it to be outrageous. The one thing I was kind of mad of is I, because they had some things sold out, and I didn't want to wait until they restocked and then have different things that I wanted sold out. I ended up having to make two orders from them. So I had to pay for shipping twice, which was irritating. I, I really prefer ordering from places that have like cheaper shipping. And like Sally's, you can get fairly cheap shipping, uh, fairly cheap. You can get free shipping if you order over a certain amount, but the, the OMGs were more expensive in the first place. So then you're sitting here having to do math of, well, okay, if I buy these at this price and these at this price, and then what does that leave me for shipping and which is actually the better deal? 
Yeah, I I think caters. I think they go by weight. I'm not positive, but like head to toe, like once you get up to like around that level, you probably could add like a several more polishes for very little more shipping. But it's like the baseline shipping to me is kind of expensive. Um, I like head to toe. I like trans design. Um, I've also ordered from 88 Beauty, although when I looked, they did not have the China Glaze OMGs yet. Um, trying to think of some other places. Used to order a lot from Colors by LaRoe directly from their website, but I actually haven't ordered at all from their new stockist. Um, sometimes I'll order from Sally's if I see they have something on a good deal. Um, Zoya, if they have a sale, because I really love Zoya. I, I don't do as many online hauls as I used to. I think I don't do quite as many hauls in general as I used to because it's how it's hard to uh, to justify with as many polishes as I have and how unorganized they are. 88 is very similar to head to toe and trans design as far as the shipping. You're, you're probably going to end up paying around $10 for shipping depending on how much you buy. Like from... Uh, Trans Design, I think my last order had, what was it, like 8 or 12 polishes? That's sad. That wasn't even that long ago, and I can't remember. And shipping was like $10. And it's, I think part of the frustration is it's so easy to get free shipping so many sites that when you run into a site that doesn't have free shipping, you're kind of like, paying for shipping? Like, who does that anymore? But like I said, sometimes when you when you do the math, it does turn out to be worth it. Okay, let's let's finish up. Let's do our our third layer of stamping or stamping our third layer of sponging here, and then we'll move on to the stamping, which I'm looking forward to. I hope that it uh, I hope that it behaves like it was doing during my my testing. Because I really, I liked the way the blue was not having, and I may actually reload my sponge each nail for this final layer just to make sure that everything stays nice and opaque. Yeah, that's really nice. I'm I'm not surprised that I love these colors together because they're like my my go-to color range. But I'm glad you guys like them too. Like, purple, of course, is my favorite color. Silver Hollow is just classic, and Tonight is one of the nicest blues, I think. And with the, with the third and final layer, I'm just really looking to kind of make sure that the gradient is nice and smooth, and to make sure that any of those bald spots that we saw before are are fully covered up so that you don't have any any nail peeking through or any spots that look obviously uh, too thin. So like on the tip of this middle nail, I've got a few little issues that hopefully as you just apply it, disappear. Hmm. I think this needs just a tad bit more purple. Right, like right there. That's really kind of challenging. Can you guys see that? It doesn't even look like it's showing up on camera. Which means, as we've learned before, that I should not worry about it so much. And maybe I can line up the stamp to cover up that problem area also. I, I love the look of stamping over gradients. But for some reason, it's not, it's not something that I do super often. And I think part of that is because I just, I fall in love with the gradient on its own and I don't want to cover it up with stamping. But that was the, uh, the plan from the beginning today. So as much as I am loving this gradient on its own, we will be covering it up momentarily. Another loud little buzzy moped sounding thing. There, here too, on the thumb, had that little area at the cuticle that was 
A little bit wonky. Now that's much better. We'll just finish off our right hand. And then we will be stamping. And oops. Okay. I almost, almost messed up my nail there. Just with my other nail. Which is one of the reasons sometimes I'll try and do, you know, left hand and right hand separately. So as not to have those kind of accidents. Oh. Yeah, flat shipping rates. Yeah, well, because nail polish is, I mean, it's pretty heavy. So when you're going by weight, it, it can get... You know, depend, depending on how they're, they're calculating it, uh, it seems like it can get pretty expensive pretty fast. And I know I'm a little bit behind at chat right now, but we're going to have another pause for drawing here in a minute where I'll be able to get caught up. And I know I don't like talk about, like, gradient technique very much because I think most most of my my viewers who are into nail art have done gradients before but like the the couple things that I would just say are my tips are you know maybe overlap it a little bit on the sponge but not too much that's another thing that can depend on on the color that you're using and use like a light touch on your nails to help avoid the bald spots and other than that, just like move around just a little bit, like not too much. You just want to go like a little bit up and down to help them blend a little bit back and forth. I mean, gradients are pretty easy as far as as far as nail art techniques go. But that doesn't mean that there's like nothing that can go wrong with them. Any anything well, not anything, but most most techniques have something that can go wrong with them, and gradients are no exception. I mean, it might even just be something as simple as, oops, you know, sticking your fingers together with the latex. That can be a super pain in the butt. Although that is usually a problem I have more with, uh... I feel like I've got more silver on this hand than on my left hand. It's okay, though. It's not horrible. Um with water marbling because when I'm doing a gradient, like I said, I use a pretty minimal amount of uh, of Simply Peel so that I just am really protecting the sides and below the cuticle of my nail and the actual side of my finger maybe doesn't necessarily even have any latex on it so that my nails, or not my nails, but my fingers can touch each other without getting stuck to each other. Um. And we've still got a little... What was that? That was weird. A little area at the tip here. So we're gonna... We've actually got... See that purple left over on the sponge there? So we're just gonna take that and really directly... There, like that. Apply it on that bald area. Alright. I'm getting slightly warm, but it's okay. Oh hey, when did Beanie leave? I missed it. I missed it. Well, when he comes back, he'll probably go in his chair. If he comes back. So we'll just do like that. For now. Um, Fun Lacquer had 14 US shipping, but took a month or more to get here. I, I, I've only ordered from Fun Lacquer once, Coney, and I don't remember what the shipping was, but I don't think it took quite that long. But they aren't they in, like, Thailand or somewhere? Singapore, maybe? Spoiled by Indies and their 350 shipping. Nice caters. Another reason to love Indies. This is when you do an accent nail. I'm tempted. I was tempted to... Uh, my accent nail idea, actually, Black Sun, was to do a nail straight black and attempt to do a gradient stamp. But then I remembered the issues that I had with stamping with these, and I decided not to. 50 plus for free shipping. Yeah, well, because why not spend enough for free shipping? Jerry! Hello! Yes, check out the snazzy new sub badges. And they are 
immediately, well, at least Coney, sorry guys, I bumped into you. Coney immediately recognized them as water marble bullseyes. So there's that. Yeah, Singapore. Oh, you got to deal with it going uh, in customs. Yeah. See, and that's something that I like literally don't know anything about. Like I know some places even like you pay for the, for your purchase and you pay for the shipping. And then sometimes you even got to pay additional more like to get them out of customs or some shit. Excuse me. That just seems like such a hassle, such a bummer, man. Okay. We've got our, uh, our stamping plate here. Yeah, Jerry, I really like, I think I, I think I mentioned in your chat, I did them the first time. And I was like, something about them was bothering me and I couldn't quite put my finger on it. And I realized a little bit later, it's that I was not creating it like a, like a, like a true water marble bullseye. Like I was actually adding the new color to the outside of the ring. Whereas with a water marble, the new color should go in the middle of the bullseye. So I redid it that way. And I, I really like, I really like how they look. We've got, what, what is today? Like the second or the third or something? I should know that. It's the third. Oh, and my Fitbit's battery is low. So I think that means we have about like two weeks until the possibility of a, of a three month resub. I, I can't remember exactly. It's like mid month. We'll get to see the, uh, the next upgrade, but then we've really got a long wait because then we've got to wait for six months and a year. And then we don't get more than that unless I become a partner, which I mean, cross my fingers, maybe one day. Duty tax. Yeah, Black Sun. Special tax. Special. Like, that doesn't make any sense either. Like, why, why you got special taxes on nail polish? Oops. Okay. I didn't mean to do that. How much? Well, I've still got enough room. I hate... That is one thing I do seem to do more when I'm recording on stream is I forget to stop recording with my other camera. And then it's just like a, a segment that should only be three minutes goes for the whole 10 minutes and fills up my limited space memory card. Had to fill out a form and such. Well, and sometimes too, uh, you know, companies will get wise to that and start lying about what's in the package. Like, uh... I'm trying to remember what I ordered this one thing and it came and I was like, it, you know, it had the details on the, on the outside of the package. I was like, well, what? I don't remember ordering this. What am I? I'm sorry. I just got distracted because I realized like, can you guys even see right, like right there on this nail, there's a hole in the polish. And I didn't even notice it until I was looking at the underside of my nail. And you probably, well, you can't see because it's not backlit. I, I like could see a little bit of light through the polish, but it's actually not too noticeable on the top of my nail. So I'm not going to mess with it. But it was like, yeah, they had, they didn't mark it as like nail polish. They marked it as like, I, I wish I could remember. It was like something that was like, well, maybe if you stretch, you could call it that, but really you probably should have marked it as nail polish. And I think they did it just to get it through, you know, through customs or whatever without like issues. You also missed a step. So it took even longer to release. What a pain in the butt. Amazon didn't, but fun lacquer did. Okay. So for those of you who were not here earlier, we looked at a couple different plates. I'd kind of narrowed it down and we decided to go with the Moyu London Gothic number uh, three. And this has a lot of cool designs on it. We're going to be using this kind of fleur de lis design. And I said that's probably not really what it's supposed to be called. But if anybody has a better name for it, let me know. <laughs> but it's a very pretty, scrolly, ornate looking design that I also realized after the fact is probably slightly too big for my nails, but we're going to make it work and we're going to see how this turns out. We're going to hope it looks cool. The entire design, I mean, is very pretty. So I don't see why even just part of the design should not be pretty. And we tested out a couple other, uh, 
Oops, what is that? Oh, it's doodles. Doodles for my mom's nail. From back in December. I The one thing I don't like about my notebook, and I probably could fix it by myself, is I wish it had like a little... Uh, like a pocket in the back for me to st stick that kind of loose stuff. So we tested uh, the black and the blue and the purple. We decided to go with the blue. We also thought about doing uh, silver, purple, and pink, but we decided to go with the silver, blue, and purple. And we tested the blue and the purple over both of those, and we're going with the blue. And I believe I decided that these little dots in the design are going toward the tip of my nail. So, let's make sure this is clean before we get started. We've got our little mini lint roller. Gets rid of lint and nail polish and any other foreign objects. And we've got this open. Where? Okay, there's my stamper, or my scraper, I mean. Make sure everything is all lined up when you're stamping, because my very first one... I took too long examining it on the stamper head and then it didn't want to it didn't want to come off the stamper head. Um when you're when you're doing just plain stamping, you wanna polish, scrape, stamp, stamp on your nail ASAP. You wanna speed run it, as Dr. Crotron said. Um when you're working with the cows or you're working with stuff like uh like when I did the water marble on the stamper. In those cases, you kind of want it to be on the drier side because, in my experience, if it's still wet, the design doesn't really want to transfer as easily. But with stamping, and I think it's mainly just because the, the layer of polish is so very thin, you really just want to go as quickly as you possibly can. So, let's make sure we're, we're where we want to be on both cameras. Yep. All right. <clears throat> For my stamping today, I'm using the Moyu London Gothic Collection Plate, number three. We're going to be using this kind of swirly fleur-de-lis pattern. And I've got my crystal clear stamper and my crystal clear, well, it's not really crystal clear anymore because it's dirty, but my scraper. And you may want to experiment with how you apply your polish for your designs. Different designs seem to respond better to different applications. Basically, polish, scrape, stamp, and then line it up and stamp it on your nail. Like so. Sorry, you can't really see that. I almost wish that the barrel was fully transparent, but there's the design. And if you want, you can change out your latex in between the gradient and the stamping. I decided to just leave the latex. And now that I'm done stamping, I can go ahead, grab the edge and whoa, remove that carefully like that. I actually still got a little bit left there. Carefully pull that off and the rest I will clean up with my usual brush and polish remover once I finish stamping on all my nails. So, of course, like I mentioned, we're going to clean this off in between each one. I like to clean it off with a little bit of acetone, pure acetone, and then with the clean end of the Q-tip, just kind of wipe away any acetone residue. Thank you, Caters. You don't know if you have the proper colors, Coney. Sometimes that's so frustrating. I, I definitely have run into that, which is kind of absurd considering how large my collection is. Um, but like when you're thinking you have a specific color in mind, like some other color just won't do. Like you want, you want that particular color for a reason. And, uh... The, the one that always comes to mind was um, a couple years ago, probably more than a couple at this point, I did uh, the Goodwill Halloween faces for Halloween. And 
this is really see now this is why you might want to do different uh different latex in between them because you might get a little bit of hardening and peeling like that uh but it's pretty easy to deal with and for one of the faces i wanted a like a really light brown or kind of a dark tan cream and i didn't have it and i was like how do i not how do i not have this color and so I had to, you know, substitute with something that was close, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't what I pictured in my head. And it's it's just a little frustrating. All right. Now, the thing with the clear stamper head, of course, is that you can really nicely line up things on your nail. We kind of talked before about uh, the struggles in the early days of stamping of the uh hard opaque conad stamper head and with a design like this you would have to just kind of kind of wing it like you know it, it was possible to still get good results but um with these clear stamper heads they have nowadays it really is a ton easier that's really stubbornly in there it's okay though it's still you know having to pick a little bit of excess latex around your edges is still in most cases uh quite a bit simpler than having to clean up a gradient around the edges of your fingers not the cleanup is horrible especially um you know if you have a lot of polish use a q-tip instead of just like a brush because the, the cotton of the Q-tip will pick up the polish as well as the acetone removing the polish. Sometimes if you have like a real lot of cleanup to do and you just have the uh, the brush, it's like it just flows all over the place. And I'm kind of on all my nails missing the very tip dot. Um... Well, you can kind of see it's left behind on the stamper head there. Um, but it's okay. It's, uh, I'm still getting the one dot on there. And I think for consistency sake, I mean, at this point I'm doing it intentionally. The first couple were kind of accidental. Like I was so worried about centering the design on my nail that I wasn't worried about centering it, uh, like centering it horizontally that I didn't fully center it vertically, but I like the way it looks. So now I'm just trying to get them to all look the same. Oh! And this is... I mean, the problem... The reason I'm having this problem is because the gradient is dry. Which, of course, you want. You don't want to try and stamp uh, on it while it's still wet. Or you will... Uh, you'll probably end up kind of pissed off. The, the thing that usually happens is that... Uh, the design gets all wrinkly like you you press if you press on it you if you have a really light touch you can maybe get away with it but if you press on it too much then it's like you know it just kind of pushes down on it too much and wrinkles the polish which may or may not be able to be fixed by your top coat a tiger light gradient well i i actually completely understand what you mean about that coney because I thought about doing a tiger water marble and then you kind of start thinking about um like the I want to say kind of the cartoony colors that you associate with a tiger compared to okay now I can actually almost fit the whole thing on my thumb compared to the actual colors of like a tiger in the wild are quite different. You know, like, if you just want to go with a cartoony tiger, well, sure, you just pick up your your basic orange and your black and you're good to go. But if you look at, like, a, an actual picture of a tiger, you know, they're a softer orange. They're gold. They're cream. Um, there's a lot more colors involved. And so first you have to decide if you want a uh, a realistic tiger color or a more cartoony tiger color. You don't own a single red polish, Lee? Whoa. 
around 90 blues and purples. That would be me. Well, I, I do have red polishes, but like in my current Helmer setup, which is by color, which I will be changing when I reorganize them. Um, when I first started out organizing them, the only drawer or the only color that had two drawers was the purple. Um, and then the close behind was blue and green. So I had a blue drawer and a green drawer. And in between them, I had a blue green drawer. So that was kind of like the overflow for both colors. And uh, of course, almost all the drawers in my Helmers are like completely full at this point. There we go. Um, but the thing is, the reason, the real reason why I'm reorganizing as I, I, I organizing and then reorganizing my stash is that, uh, usually when I'm looking for a color, I know exactly what color I'm looking for and I'm looking for it by brand. Um, sometimes I do still look by color and that is where the gigantic project of swatching my entire collection comes in because I would like to have the Helmers organized by brand and then have everything on swatch sticks and have the swatch sticks organized by color. That is the, uh, the grand eventual vision that I, that I need to get to work on. Um, the 12 hour challenge was fun, but it also served as kind of, what are you? Oh, your battery's dead. Of course it is. Cause why wouldn't it be? Um, the 12 hour challenge also was a little bit of a procrastination because it was like, I have a lot of other things that I should be doing. Like, uh, finalizing my, my game plan for, uh, for reorganizing my collection. Sorry. Hi, I'm back. I'm just, oh no, that's not, that's not the one I wanted. I have, <laughs> I have five batteries for my camera. Um, I have the very original one. I have my first set of two that I ordered and I have my more recent set of two that I ordered. And like the older ones, they don't hold as much of a charge. So those are kind of like, uh, emergency backup batteries only. So I just try to make sure that I'm grabbing the right one when I'm reaching over there. Okay, let's get back zoomed in about like maybe, maybe like here. Is that where we were? Maybe a little bit more. The one thing that really irritates me when the battery dies is that it doesn't remember how much I was zoomed in. And of course, if I'm like in the middle of something, I would like it to have a similar zoom level. Oh my God, you guys, it is starting to get warm in here. I got to take a fan break. That's what I get for not turning on the air conditioner before I started. And partly it was because Beanie was in here and I didn't want him to bail out. And he went and bailed out on us anyway. Oh. <sighs> Still don't get your stamp super straight or centered. It is hard. Well, you, I, I probably, you could see how I was looking. It's like I was looking and then to really get like an overhead view, I have to like look inside the ring light and you can't take too long to line it up or it's going to dry too much. And then it's not going to, going to, uh, not going to transfer properly. Yeah. More white and yellowish colors. I... Somewhere around here. Oh yeah, actually, okay, this is just, I was thinking of this months ago, and this is actually like a, let me shake this up, I'll show you. So I was thinking of like an orangey orange, like this color of a gold, and maybe like this color of a gold, and a black. So like these two, like this, this almost looks coppery next to this gold, but it is gold. And I think with the orange, these two would go together nicely and maybe a cream and a black to do like a tiger stripe water marble. One of the, one of the things on my to-do list. Yeah. I used to love, love Maybelline because they were some of the only like limited edition colors that I would see at like Walgreens. You know, they'd have like a end cap. Both of those are, are labeled as limited edition. 
And, uh, like, most, I'm thinking, yeah, most of my Maybellines are actually up there in a shoebox on top of my desk. We'll see. I, I hope I can actually get my crap together. Because... I, there, there's so much in my collection I feel like I've forgotten about. So it would be really fun to go through the whole thing, swatching and like show you guys and just like reminisce on old colors because every polish, well, just about every polish, uh, has a little story to go with it. Like where I found it or how I found it or going on like a searching mission to find it like uh searching out polish like having to go to multiple stores looking for it can be very fun as long as you find what you're looking for at the end like uh the last time i think i did that was when sinful colors came out with those transforming effect top coats uh the ones that give you whoa <laughs> The ones that give you kind of a, a spotted texture. A lot of people have been using them lately for uh, like fluid art for nails. And I think that trip took me four different Walgreens, if I remember correctly. And I believe I struck out the first two I stopped at didn't have them at all. And then the third one I stopped at, dang it. Um, the third one I stopped at had like two and the last one had like the final three. I don't remember, but if you go out and you're looking and you stop at that many stores and you still don't find what you're looking for, that is, whoa, that is not fun. Searching is only fun if you find what you're searching for. Otherwise it's just irritating. So we're almost done here. We have, what, three more nails left? Then we'll do some cleanup. Then we'll do some top coat. Then maybe I'll show you guys, because you guys asked. I was debating. I, I still haven't decided. Some of you guys wanted to see the uh, upcoming months of my subscriber badges. So I, I may or may not show those at the end. I'm not sure if I want to keep them a secret or not. A stamping plate for the stripes. That's cool. Um, I mean, there's also like, you know, mixing polishes or frankening your own colors, which I've always thought is really cool, but which I've never actually done. Like to get the exact perfect color that you're looking for. Okay, let's, uh... <sighs> Stamping makes me nervous still, you guys, honestly. I'm I'm really pleased with how this is turning out, but like each stamp, I'm like, oh, be careful. Oh, be careful <laughs> to myself. Like, I feel like it would be so easy to just accidentally, I don't know, miss stamp it or line it up incorrectly or wait too long and have it not stamp properly. But I do really like how these are, how these are turning out. Like I said, I may try the other color combination, too. In fact, some of the other designs on here seem like they'd be really cute. With uh, some of the other, other combinations. Like this, this kind of one, have this like at the tip with the, uh, the silver, purple, pink and stamp with that purple. I think that would look really nice. Plus, I mean, I, I kind of made a resolution not exactly a resolution, kind of though, to do more stamping because I have so many plates. Like this plate had never been used uh, before I started this manicure. At the, st at the start of the stream, we peeled off the, uh, the plastic covering. And I've got tons of plates like that that I've purchased and never used. Um, you know, actually, I'm going to redo that. You can kind of see... Um, it went a little bit wonky. Well, here, let's... So, the reason I'm not stamping that one on my nail is you see here and here how those are 
Whoa. Okay, now I'm stuck to the napkin. That was a rookie mistake. Um, like, see how the how the tip is crooked? I think I just stamped it a little bit too crooked, and, and we kind of lost our symmetry there, and that would bug the hell out of me. So, and, and those are the type of things, like I said, you want to examine your stamp, but you don't want to examine it too long and let it dry, but you do want to, like, catch that, because it's much easier to just, uh, you know, redo the stamp than to notice that once it's actually on your nail and try to correct it would be a lot harder. Oops, and that's a little bit off-center too, but it's still looking good. Like, I mean, ideally you want it in the middle of the stamper head, not off to the side like that, but we can make this work. There we go. Alright, just the thumb, well, this too. And see, and that's one thing that can happen. The the latex came up and this uh, dry polish was left behind. So there's actually not latex here, but you're still getting the ease of cleanup because that polish is dried. It's not stuck to your skin. It just, it was so dry that it didn't stick to the latex anymore either. All right. So one more. And the re I'm doing the painting sideways here. That also was a test that we did at the beginning of the stream because I was getting uh, some gaps in the design going at certain other angles. And I'm still getting a few gaps, but uh, that's the easiest solution that I had. That looks slightly off-center, but it's probably nobody else will notice. <laughs> So, see in here again, the latex is coming out literally from under the polish, you guys see? So the polish didn't stick to the latex, but it also didn't stick to my skin. So now I can grab, well, it wants to break into pieces, but you can just grab that and pull it off your, off your finger. And I use tweezers a lot. Tweezers are not absolutely required, but like... To me, it's it's a, it's a super important nail art tool because there are so many different ways you can use it. <clears throat> okay, we've still got still got a good amount of time left on my memory card. So I'm just gonna go around and slightly pick on these edges where there's a little bit of polish or a little bit of latex remaining. A dry brush for the gradient, so that may be a good idea. I've been wanting to do that peel was so satisfying. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Like it's not as fully satisfying as like taking it off while it's wet and really getting a fully clean peel. But it's it's still like I mentioned, it's still a lot earlier. I want to do like a not a dry brush gradient, but like a fan brush gradient. Like I've used the fan brush for like dry brush designs before, like with more gaps in between the color or uh, like I did for my 4th of July nails where they're just little uh, like little separated lines but you can also use the use the fan brush to do gradients and I've seen some that are really just beautiful but it's like it's one of those things that looks easy and I'm like I don't know if it would actually be that easy for me or if I'd have problems so when I think about doing a gradient I just go back to my my sponging as my go-to. And I had a little bit of a beanie hair. <laughs> a beanie hair stuck under the stamping, between the stamping and the gradient. That's a good thing to uh, notice and get rid of before you, before you move on to top coating. Alright, I think this is about as good as I'm going to get with the tweezers. Well, yeah, we'll get my, uh, my cleanup brush here in just a second. Um, a little bit more polish mover. Break time e equals twitch time. Looks cool. You like it, Doc? Thank you. I'm qu I'm quite pleased with how it turned out. It's going to look even better with a top coat, because everything looks better with top coat. You have a fan brush, but you've never used it? You gotta, well, I don't use mine that often either, so I don't really get to yell at you, but you gotta just give it a try, Coney. I, uh... I think I originally got it for 
what? It wasn't for gradients, and I don't think it was for, like, the little spiky designs either. I honestly can't remember why I originally bought it. Or if I just bought it because I knew that it was something that would be good for nail art. Alright, let's, uh, move that a little bit. Yeah, we've still got a slightly dirty napkin here. That is okay. And sometimes, to keep my napkin from drifting around, I'll just stick my, uh... my acetone container, my little my little wasabi bowl or whatever this is. I tried to look it up on Amazon and see if I could find something similar to this and I really couldn't. Cuz so I was going to include it in my in my nail polish essentials list. But like I I've I've mentioned before I think I I'm assuming it's some sort of soy sauce or wasabi bowl because it appears to have a a uh, chopstick rest on the side of the bowl. Okay. Hmm. Hold on. Oh, somebody's having a cookout. I see people people unloading food and shit. I'm starting to get hungry too. But we are we are entering the home stretch. Once you've finished stamping and removed all your latex, just go ahead and finish any cleanup around the edges with a small brush dipped in polish remover. And we're just gonna I mean this is normal stuff. I always, almost always, you know, do this right before I add top coat. Even if a, even with a plain manicure, like I really like to try and get the area around my cuticles neat and clean, and uh, just make sure there's no polish where you don't want there to be polish. The cuticle area in particular, and. I think I've discussed on stream before, like, if you are super good with your latex, you can get in real close, like, on the on the inside of the cuticle instead of on the outside. But number one, uh, that doesn't always play nice with peel-off base coat. And number two, sometimes it just doesn't want to properly peel. So instead of getting this nice, clean, inside-the-cuticle peel you get like a regular peel and then you have a bunch of latex that you need to clean up right around your cuticle because it's like stuck in there and doesn't want to peel properly. The colors and the sheen between the polishes. I, I kind of love having some of the people in here, uh, like all the support from the porch and people who aren't necessarily uh, like super familiar with nail polish and stuff. Because the way they look at stuff is very unique. In some ways, okay, this is maybe a stretch in, to some people, but in some ways it's like Hollow Knight. Uh, Dr. Crotron, I saw the other day, I wish I could remember who it was that I was watching. It's like I've been watching so many people play Hollow Knight lately, going into my, my own withdrawal. And that area where you go uh, as you're about to fight the uh, the broken vessel... And you're supposed to like zoom across it with the, with the crystal dash. They they freaking pogoed their way all the way over there, <laughs> except um, it's designed so that you can't get up at the other end. It makes it makes it look like you need a double jump if you get over there, but really you're supposed to be doing the crystal dash the whole way across. And I was just sitting there, kind of like slack jawed, because I mean you know pogo is my weakest skill, so I never in the world would have thought to pogo across this pit of spikes that you can't even see the other side of. But these, this person that didn't, they didn't know the crystal dash existed. They, they pretty much, I think most people that have like played Metroidvanias before or those type of games, they instantly look at the game. They're like, Oh yeah, there's going to be a double jump. Where's this double jump? But then there are other moves like the crystal dash that are just as, just as important but they don't know that they need to be looking for it. So it was like he had asked where the double jump was, and people told him, oh, it's down in, a, what you call, fucking ancient basin. And he gets down there, he's like, well, but I can't, how am I supposed to get over here? I can't get over here because I need double jump. And it was like, well, actually you don't. You You need something else that you don't even know that you need to be looking for. And if you missed me say it earlier, Doc, I probably will be playing Hollow Knight tomorrow and Sunday since I'm doing nails today. 
Um, I miss I miss it so much. I that that game I have decided is probably my favorite game. I just I love everything about it. I I kind of can't wait to beat it just so I can play it again. <laughs> And I have so much to do, so, so much to do when I, uh, when I get started tomorrow. Um, I know where I need to go now to, uh, to get started with the Grim Troop. And, uh, that's definitely on my to-do list. I know that there is a, a charm that I did not get over by the Lake of Un, 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 whatever, however you want to say it. And, um, like a bunch of other stuff too. And since I, since I managed to beat the Watcher Knight, which people will say is some of the Watcher Knights, all six of them, which, holy crap, Dr. Crotron, like, I, I'm not mad that you didn't tell me, but I'm somewhat mad that I didn't like watch somebody and know and figure out that there's a, a cheat for that fight where you only have to fight five of them instead of six of them. Like, I don't know if that really would have made the difference for me because I feel like my, my failed attempts, I was always dying on about like the third or fourth one. And once I actually did it, like I, I did it pretty cleanly. So I don't know if only having five instead of six really would have mattered for me. But I was like, where is this person going? What are they doing up here? What are they? <gasps> oh my God. I was just like, I was in shock. Next step is 20 hour speed run. You want to buy that game, but you have so many others you should finish first. I, I probably would have that problem, Coney, except like before, before I started getting into Twitch, like I didn't play any games for such a long time. And, uh, Hollow Knight is really, like, that was the first one on my list as far as, if I start playing games again, like, that's what I want to play. It is, it is definitely worth it, Coney. The 20 hour speedrun. I want to try and get the, uh, I think once I beat it, I don't think that the 10 hour in-game achievement would be unreasonable because you don't need to get the good ending for that, right? You just need the regular, the regular ending. So, I mean, without having to mess around with all the dream bosses and everything, that shouldn't take that long. Knowing, knowing where I'm going and knowing what I need to, need to do and need to get. and I think the 10 hours is definitely reasonable. And, I mean, shit, when I'm watching you learn 106%, I mean, hopefully I'm absorbing a little bit of that knowledge. I don't know if that would be my category. I don't, I don't think if I were to run it, I can't see myself running uh, whatever the one is with the glitches. Because, like, the glitches are kind of cool, but it's also like, man, you're missing... You're missing the cool movement, you know, by these these glitches that let you just, like, float around. Mm. Oh... You 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 may have said that, Crotron. Mrs. Shredo, hello. Thank you for joining us. I I'm loving them too. I, I have to agree with your uh, assessment of awesomeness. And we haven't even gotten to the top coat. Top coat's in about like two minutes once I once I finish these cleanup. Ori, I, I like the look of Ori Doc. I watched Jerry play through it. Um it's it's I mean, it's still not like a super, super um, high graphic game, but I'm not sure if my computer can handle Ori. Um, I was pretty confident it could handle Hollow Knight. But Ori seems more more graphically... Uh, what do I want to say? Like, like, I might need a better graphics card. I mean, my computer is almost three years old at this point. And I think the only reason that I'm getting away with as much as I am as far as uh, gameplay and streaming and stuff is because I initially built it with an eye toward editing. So I added a lot more, um, you know, in the RAM and, and video card department than maybe most casual PC owners would. Um, otherwise, I think most three-year-old computers would probably have a little bit of a challenge playing a game and streaming a game. 
But I don't, I don't, I mean, I'm not a super computery person, so that may not be an accurate statement. But I know for anything too much, too much more, I would need a new computer. And I, I think I've got a few more little chats that I'm behind them, but I'm I'm just at the end of this. I'm just going to finish this up and then I'll get caught up with the chat. There. There we go. A, a long list of games you're planning on, supposedly. Oh, you want it for Switch? I thought about waiting for it for Switch, Coney. And then I just decided, like, just, I wanted to just do it on PC because the Switch, well, number one, the Switch is an additional expense because I don't have a Switch yet. And then I also would need, um, you know, a good, uh, capture card for modern systems. Like, I got the capture card for my NES, but it's just, a uh, GV USB 2, which is like a pretty cheap, uh, kind of old school capture card for retro games. And looking at the options for, like, newer systems and HD capture, I was just getting so baffled and so confused. And I was like, I don't want to be waiting on all these other things just to play this. So I decided to just go for it for PC. I bought it during the uh, the Steam Summer Sale, along with a couple other games. And uh, I'm so glad that I did. Yeah, just kill Hollow Knight. I'm 20 people's category, it seems like. It's it's a cool category. I feel like, but and correct me if I'm wrong, Doc. Is the main is the main reason you guys run 106 instead of 107 because of that particular glitch that allows you to do shit through the walls and through the floors? Is that and and basically the most of the run would be similar in a hundred seven percent run because you're that's still getting like basically everything except it's through the next the next DLC and the and the more current patches. Um it's uh let me let me look here. Does it show me here? Where where did that open? Oh right here. Um I have a GeForce GTX 750Ti dock. Um which I think is was like pretty good at the time and is now kind of like middling-ish. I don't know. It maybe it could run Ori. Ori looks really pretty, but it's not like I mean it's not like Persona or something. Or not Persona. What am I thinking of? You know, with like all these detailed face 3D graphics and drastic stuff like that. The main reason you think a capture card for PS4 and Switch is your rainbow. Yeah. Oh, you don't have a PC, you have a Mac. I I know next to nothing about Macs. I mean, there there are some good capture cards out there. The thing that I was partly running into a problem with is that I am still on Windows, what is this, 8? And I don't particularly want to upgrade to Windows 10 because it's not compatible with my current editing program. And a lot of the uh, HD capture cards that seem to be the preferred capture card for gamers, like... They're, they're designed to run with Windows 10. Maybe you can get them to run with 8 with issues. So my choice was then, well, then do I want to go with one of these less recommended cards or do I want to learn a new editing program and upgrade to Windows 10? So in addition to like picking between these cards, it was like picking between my operating system and picking between my editing program. And it, it just was like, I could see myself uh, like procrastinating and procrastinating and I wanted to get playing and uh, especially too because on the Steam sale I was able to get it for I, I want to say I got it for like 15 bucks on the Steam sale which was like nice really nice based on what you know yes oh that was my other question Gods and Glory will likely change the route and make 106 Legacy well, 106 is already technically legacy, right? Because because it's not on the current it's not on the current patch and it's not on the current DLC, so isn't it already kind of considered legacy? 750 can handle Ori. Well, I I didn't buy it during the Steam sale only because like I I started going through Steam and just like adding all this stuff on my wish list, and I had to really kind of like rein myself in, like okay, really you stream two to four times a week 
how do you think you're going to play all these games? So I picked up Hollow Knight. I picked up Disgaea. I picked up uh, Stardew Valley. And I picked up Meat Boy just because it was so cheap that I couldn't resist. It's not considered legacy yet. The recent all skills is like 1.14. So now I don't understand a ton about down patching. Can you down patch and still be on a different DLC? Like, I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. If I, I'll, I'll say if I speed run, it'll be after God and Glory comes out. <laughs> Cause I, I ain't got time to be like learning a whole bunch of stuff and then having everything change. Plus, like I said, I want to try for the for the in-game achievements too. Let's get ourselves let let's treat ourselves, you guys, to a shiny well it's not shiny. It's, it's a fucking napkin. But to a nice new clean paper towel for our top coat. Down patching removes DLC. Yeah, see, I I don't understand that then. So if you guys are not on the most recent DLC, how is it not considered legacy? And if it's not considered legacy, what difference is one more DLC going to make? I don't know. Not not a pro gamer here, despite prior uh, assertions. <laughs> hmm. My tea is so cold right now. Hmm. But it's still tasty. Okay. We're going to do the top coat. Everybody, well, maybe not everybody, lots of people's favorite part. <clears throat> Finally, I'll be finishing with the top coat. And as usual, I'm using Sesh Feet. All this should pop and be magical and awesome and gorgeous. Pop the hollow. Pop the metallic. Wrap your tips and your sides. If you're using a uh, a regular base coat, like not a peel off base coat, I would probably say you know it's not necessary to wrap your sides. But I do always recommend wrapping your tips. Um, I feel like it helps with uh, the manicure wearing longer in general. I also think that it helps a little bit with um, the shrinkage that Sesh Feet is a little bit notorious for, but I, I really can't say how much it does help because I've never, I've never had a really bad problem with shrinkage with Sesh Feet. Certain other brands, it does not necessarily seem to play well with. Uh, like I remember when I was using a lot of new bar. That was kind of a phase I went through. I usually would try to top that off with their own uh, fast dry top coat because Sesh V did not seem to play nicely with Nubar. But generally speaking, Sesh V is my favorite, favorite thing. Whoa, okay. That's fine. Almost, almost a disaster, but not quite. And finish off the right hand here. This really is gorgeous. Even though, like, uh, especially like on some of my smaller, shorter nails, like my pinky here, I mean, you're obviously not getting the entire, the entire design of the stamp, uh, the whole fleur de lis or whatever we decided this thing was. But it's uh, even a partial design is still a cool, a cool looking design. And while I'm finishing off, I'll just ask, do you, are you guys interested? Should I show my, uh, the other sub badges or should I keep them a secret? You guys probably don't, don't care for secrets. Oh, and Dr. Cartron, if you did not see, if you're still here, if you did not see the message I left on your VOD, aww! So much adorbs. So freaking much adorbs, Doc. Dr. Crotron, you guys, has a new itty bitty tiny adorbs pupper named Ben. And he showed him off before I got to a stream last night and I had to sit and watch the VOD 
which was not a chore because I enjoy watching Doc play Hollow Knight. But I'm like, man, when's this, when's this secret coming? When is, what did I miss? Where's the secret? And secret turned out to be a poppy. You don't get the logic yourself. The community gets together and just makes a decision about what the le legit speedrun is considered. Yeah, I guess, I guess that makes sense. I mean, when it comes to speedruns, like, uh, the community basically lays down the law and different communities have different laws. I mean, might even be, you know, same person in different community. And in one game, something is considered, you know, accepted and not a big thing. And in another game, it might be considered like absolutely not a thing you're ever allowed to do. But I think, I kind of think that's the way it should be with speed running. Um, other than in cases where it's like the in-game achievements and stuff, obviously you're going by what the game considers uh, the speed run, but... <laughs> I don't know. Nobody's, nobody's saying anything. Maybe I should not show the new badges. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Maybe I will next time. Maybe I will tomorrow. I just don't even know. Or maybe, maybe I should wait until I get the first person in chat with a, uh, with the three monther and then I could show the other months. Are you trying to learn how to do the, I, I actually, Dr. Crotron, we can skip it for now because I don't think people care too much. The, uh. I think, um, you're, you're doing it. You're, I think you need a new after poll. See, look at, uh, I, I have this up because I really did intend to, I really did intend to learn how to use poll properly. That's about, that's about Nightbot polls. And, uh, this one here, this is for your own, for your own streamer knowledge also. And this one is about Moobot polls. Well, let's see. Let's test. Just you and me, Doc, since everybody else has gone back into their lurk, which is not. So if I do that and then what, what do I do to... <laughs> <laughs> We're learning, Dr. Curtron. Um, um, no, because we're not getting the Nightbot notification of should you eat a pizza. Maybe I need to... Uh, I wonder if I need to enable it in Nightbot. I, I bet I probably do. I bet it's in one of those Nightbot options that I've never... that I've never properly explored. Might be owner only. That's also true. I'm not going to worry about it right now because even though this was like not a long stream, you guys, I'm so tired. I feel like such a lazy bones, but I am literally exhausted. I'm very, very pleased with how this manicure turned out. And anybody that's lurking, please don't feel bad about lurking. Whatever the reason may be. Oh, oh, oh no. Megan is raiding me. <laughs> Megan. Thank you for the raid so much. Um, hi, people. <laughs> I am actually, I am just about to wrap up stream. We just finished. We just finished working on this manicure. Hi, Charlie's Dragon. Hi, Megan. How did you, uh, how did you like Detroit? I saw you were playing it, I think, last week, and I, I didn't have time to stop by. Yeah, we we just did this tutorial during stream, Charlie, and this will be up. the 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 edited version of the tutorial will be up on my YouTube channel on Sunday. You were going through your stamps a couple days ago. Yeah, I was working with. Uh, let me see if I can get it off of my mat here. This gothic plate from Moyu London. This uh, kind of fleur de lis type of design here which I've had for a while and I had to like remove the plastic before I could even, before I could even do it. But yeah, we worked with that. We had, uh, we did a gradient with these, which are not showing to their best advantage under the ring light, but these are hollows. They're awesome. 
and then we stamped with uh, this metallic Moe London stamping polish on top of it. I'm I'm really in love with it. We literally, like two minutes ago, just finished with top coat. D&D &D gel base and top coat. Much cheaper than gelish, but you can actually... It actually covers the free edge. You know, I've never heard of that brand. Like, I don't have a have a ton of gel polish i think the two i only have two brands i have some pink jellac and i have some madame glam and uh i like both of them okay the madame glam is the one that i had troubles with though the last time i did the foils so next time i do foils i would probably go back to my pink jellac or not wait in between yeah, Coney, I got raided. Like, literally, I was literally about to go and see where I could send you guys. But I guess now I have more more people to send wherever I'm sending you, which I don't know yet. Apparently, not to Megan, because <laughs> Megan is wrapped up. Um, Let's see if I have any of my other creative people here today. What do we What do we got going on here? Um, I feel sometimes when I, when sometimes, blah, blah, when I'm just looking for something to watch, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm following way too many people. And then when I'm looking for somebody to like host or to raid, I'm like, man, I'm not following enough people. Cause like, for whatever reason, like this time of day, or maybe this day, like most of my creative people that I'm following are not on. But I guess that's okay. The manicure under the beanie cam from the faraway perspective. I I could it might actually just be easier. Let's just zoom back out a little bit here, like that. There. Now you kind of get like you can't see the pattern as well, but it's I feel like it's one of those manicures where you want to get closer and see. So you like look at it from a distance and you're like, ooh, that's cool. And then you're like, well, let me take a closer look. And then you actually can see, you know, the pattern and on top of the gradient. I don't think you see much at all in the beanie cam. Well, you kind of do. The the missing beanie cam. We had my cat for a while uh, at the beginning of stream. He was actually sleeping in bed under the covers. Uh, he likes to get wrapped up in there when I make the bed and I call him a bean burrito. But, uh, thank you, Megan. Thank you, Becky Ann. Um, yeah, so let's see. I think, I mean, a lot of time, and it's my own kind of hang up. Like when I'm creative, I want to host somebody creative. And when I'm gaming, I want to host somebody gaming. And then half the time it doesn't work out on both sides. So then I just have to go to one of my, my go-to people that I like to, that I like to host or raid. And, uh, I think today that is going to be, um, yeah, you have to go, Coney. Thank you for stopping by and thank you for staying for the raid. We are about to go and raid our pal Jerry, who was here earlier today. He is playing Octopath Traveler, which is a really cool retro RPG. I'm going to get the raid started. And I want to thank all you guys, people that have been here since the beginning, people that just came in at the end. Uh, sorry, I don't have more to show you guys, but I appreciate all you stopping by. I'll be streaming Hollow Knight this weekend if anybody wants to stop by and hang out with me for that. I hope I'll see some of you there. I hope you guys all have a wonderful, wonderful day. And uh, raid message is um, generic raid message.
So I'm sorry you didn't get the big fancy welcome. But thank you, everybody. Thank you, Colette, and welcome, everybody. <laughs> that's, see, that's why I've never read. I always know this because I ain't creating enough to come up with a good read. <laughs> hey, Becky, how you doing? Oops. Time to stop streaming, I guess. <laughs>